Hey everybody. Today we're subsetting data frames in R using the slice commands from the dplyr package. Each one of these commands takes a data frame as an input and gives you a data frame back with the same number of columns, so the same variables, but generally a smaller number of rows. In that way, they're similar to the filter command. But the filter command is going to give you back all the rows that meet specified criteria, where the slice commands are going to give you back certain numbers of rows or a certain proportion of rows in your data frame. I have a vid on the filter command. I'll throw a link up top here if that's what you're looking for. In this vid, we're going to work with the Star Wars data set that's included in the dplyr package. It's a tibble, so it prints nicely, and so I've started by pulling it up over here in the console. So the first command that we should see is just your basic slice command. And as with any command in the dplyr package, its first argument is a data frame. So it's going to play nicely with the pipe. And fundamentally, all we, can do, all we do here is just tell it which row numbers we want to keep. So this is the pretty basic version. So let's keep rows 4 to 8. Let's get Darth Vader through R5D4. There we go. Slightly more useful than that is taking is putting negative numbers in here. So for instance, I can take my original data set and just get rid of, I don't know, let's get rid of Darth Vader and Princess Leia. So let's do negative four and negative five. There we go, so those two are removed. That's useful for instance if you want to manually remove an outlier from your data set. The next command to know is slice head or slice tail. And this is going to take the first observations or the last observations in your data set. So um, Star Wars. And let's take the last four in the data set. There we go. We could also do slice head with n equals four. Suppose we need the last 20% of observations in the data set. It's prop equals 20%, 0.20. There we go. And you can see we kept 17 of the rows in this set. Probably more useful than that is slice min or slice max. This is going to keep a certain number of rows in your data set that correspond to the minimum or maximum values of some specified variable. So for instance, um, let's say that I want the four individuals in the Star Wars universe that weigh the most or that have the greatest mass. So I'm going to start using the pipe here. I'm going to pipe Star Wars into slice max. That'll pass Star Wars as the first argument to the slice max command. I need to specify what variable I'm interested in here. I want the, the rows that correspond to the maximum values of the mass variable. And so the syntax is order by mass. And then I need to specify what number I want to keep or what proportion. So let's just keep four. There we go. Notice, however, that it did give us five rows back. And the reason is that there is a tie. There are two characters here that have a mass of 136. And the slice max command didn't want to arbitrarily decide which one to keep in which um, subset. If we do need exactly four values, we can add an argument for that. It is with ties equals false. And you'll see there we get four values. So on the one hand, it's nice we got exactly the number we specified. On the other hand, there's been that sort of arbitrary decision made. We could put prop equals here instead of n. We could do slice min instead. Of all the slice commands, I think the most useful, however, is slice sample. And so let's use pipe again. Let's, uh, let's pipe Star Wars into it. And slice sample is going to pick some rows at random. Here we have to either specify a number or a proportion. I'll do prop equals 20. Let's keep 20% of the data set at random. Okay, so you can see once again we got 17 of the 87 rows, so 20%. Here the first one was Boba Fett. If I rerun the command, now it started with Django Fett, Django Fett coincidentally. This is done without replacement. If you need to do it with replacement, there's an argument for that. This is useful, for instance, if you're manually splitting a data frame into a test and training data set. So a lot of times you might want to keep 20% of your observations back as your test set. So let's assign this to be a data frame. We can take a look at that. So this time Mesa Windu was number one. 
If you've got a test set, you want the rest of the rows to be your training set. So let's wrap up this video by taking the rows in the Star Wars data set that are not in the test data set. We don't want to just do a slice sample with a prop of 80% because that'll overlap in all likelihood with the rows that we already put in our test data set. So for our training data set, do the pipe here. What we're going to want to do is to use the anti join command to take all the values from Star Wars that are not in the test set. And I did something wrong here. Star Wars, pipe it into anti join. Ah, I don't want that. That's right. I put Star Wars in there twice. There we go. All right, so let's just take a quick look to confirm that we did our anti-join correctly. So we got test. We can see that that is 17 rows. We've got training. That is 70 rows. And of course, Star Wars is 87 rows. So at least those numbers add up. If you go through and go through and look, you can see that there is no overlap between those two. We could even confirm that with another anti-join.